Hey everybody, welcome to my fourth official live stream here on YouTube. So I want to welcome all the YouTubers, uh, the two bisters, the two bets, trumpet players, brass players, and non-brass players, and various crazy people. Yes, I'm sure there's a little bit of that on this um, live stream right now. I'm Kurt Thompson with TrumpetZizzle.com, and this is a potpourri live stream. So we're going to talk about all kinds of great stuff from trumpet to any brass instrument to music to real life. So I put a little ticker down here that you can watch. I didn't do that last time. I forgot. And by the way, I forgot to welcome you in case you're watching this after this live stream has turned into a video. So that... That will be the case for all these live streams. They actually, when we're done, YouTube, you know, put some little pixie dust on it, and then it just turns into a regular video. So if you're watching this uh, six months from now or a month from now or five years from now, it's, I welcome you. So, um, all right, um, down at the bottom, I got some little crafty banners that are going to be floating by, and some of them you may want to... Um, pay heed to. They may apply to you and you may be able to get something out of it. Um, some of it will be about um, subscribing to this channel. Some of it will be about some of the courses that are run on trumpetzizzle.com. And I might have a couple of motivational uh, things to say to you as well. One last thing that I thought that might be important because I got an email about this from somebody who is a student who gave me the thumbs up. I've been taking these live streams and actually painstakingly and time consumingly going through and adding chapters. Are you guys familiar with what chapters are? So if you're not, YouTube allows you to set the time markers in the video and you can actually go through the different topics that are talked about, put in that time marker in the description. This saves you guys a lot of time because for example, if there are people that happen to click in on this and they're not trumpet players, they, they're not interested in anything trumpet or brass or music related, but they were interested in maybe something political that we talked about or the, the home invasion, the home security thing that we talked about, or for example, for guys and dating, and they don't want to have to listen to an hour of me talk about trumpet. They just want to get right to the, the part they're interested. If you look in the description, that's what I've been doing. You can just click on the chapter and it'll take you right to the topic that you're interested in or the topics that you want to avoid. So you might want to look at that um, after this live stream is over. Okay, what else? Let me get to the comment section here. Hold on a second, guys. Um, all right. Um, Elite Alpaca, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hi, welcome tonight. And uh, let's see. My guess, Elite, is that you probably, possibly, might have a question. So if that is the case, fire away. Go ahead and ask your question. I was going to do something before that, but uh, you guys are my priority. I mean, that's why I'm here. So, I mean, I'm just not here talking to myself, although sometimes I do talk to myself on the live stream. You can watch that in past live streams. No problem with that. So go ahead and ask your question, Elite. Okay, while you're thinking of asking the question, um, I, I wanted to go back and reiterate that point on chapters. Uh, so for those of you who are catching this as a rebroadcast when it's um, you know recorded, when it's turned into a video and not just a live stream, um, whatever your interest is, if you're a trumpet player, you can go to the description and look at all the time markers for things related to trumpet. And you can just click on those. That way, if it turns into an hour and a half live stream, you don't have to watch the whole thing and try to you know fast forward through. So anyway, um, that's important. So I'll usually do that the day after. I'll get the chapters going. Okay, let's see here. You play really off center on the trumpet. And so, okay, that's a comment, Elite. Not a question, but I'm gonna, let me see if I can make up the question that you might've been thinking about. I play really off center on the trumpet and I'm thinking that maybe that's not good to do. Is that what your question is? Now, if you play off center on the trumpet or any brass instrument, 
but you sound fantastic. Wow, then don't change it, okay? And if you play fantastically, and if you're a kick butt player, then don't change it, okay? Now, the other point is if you play off center and you are not so good and you are struggling with tone, you're struggling with tonguing, accuracy, range, endurance. If you're struggling in a lot of areas and you're playing off center, then yes, you do have uh, quite a problem and we'd like to adjust you back to the center. So um, anyway, the best thing for you to be doing, hopefully, is working with your private instructor in your local area because they can get hands on with you, figuratively speaking, but in the same room and look at exactly what's going on. Uh, that's what I highly recommend. Are you taking private lessons? Okay, let's see here. Okay, yeah, so you, so you're, you're an upstream player. If you play on half of the upper lip, it means most of it's down. That means when the air comes into the mouthpiece, it's hitting the upper bowl of the mouthpiece. For those of you who didn't know, or maybe you know, but wanted a crystallized definition of that, an upstream player simply means when you blow into the mouthpiece, that compressed air is gonna go typically, <clears throat> excuse me, one direction or the other, either up or down. Now, I guess it could go in straight, but it tends to have a, 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 um, a preference of going one way or the other. It just it doesn't go straight into the hole. It'll kind of hit the, the upper rim and then go in the hole or hit the bottom rim and go in the hole. So the more you drop your mouthpiece downwards, the more the air tends to hit the upper um, bowl on the inside of the mouthpiece. And that makes sense, right? I mean, if the hole center and you blow, maybe you could hit center, maybe, but it's still gonna hit some of the bowl regardless. But the more you drop it, well, the upper part of the, the bowl of the mouthpiece is on top, right? I mean, a bit underneath, inside the mouthpiece. So it makes sense if you do drop it, the air is gonna constantly hit um, the upper part of the bowl of the mouthpiece. The same is true if you play um, a little bit higher, let's say two thirds on the top lip. That, that leaves the bottom of the mouthpiece um, higher on your lips, and you're just naturally gonna be, the air is naturally gonna jettison and strike the bottom part of the mouthpiece. So that's kind of a definition for you guys that um, may, maybe have heard these terms, upstream player, downstream player. Uh, I'm just volunteering information here, Elite, that I tend to be a downstream player most of the time. However, um, I've noticed that there is a subtle embouchure change in an air directional change, once I get up around the triples, especially let's say triple C and beyond, if you go back and watch my record uh, making video where I hit the quadruple C, um, if you could take a screenshot of when I'm doing that, where the mouthpiece is versus how I normally play a double C, for example, you'll notice that a significant increase in the mouthpiece traveling higher, making me more of an upstream player. So, um, I believe uh, upstream player does allow, or upstream air can allow uh, most players to play a little higher. The thing is that I feel that the tone is going to thin out a little bit. You're going to get that a little bit more shrill sound in some cases. Um, you don't quite have the power uh, that typically would come with the downstream. Downstream players typically, I feel like, have more power and a full rounded sound. Don't confuse power and a full round of sound with loudness because there are some people that play on the upstream who are loud, but they have kind of a shrill sound or a thin sound. Does that make sense? How can you be loud but have a thin sound? It's, I guess it's because you're not getting all the overtones and colors to, to fire up and come out of your bell. So you may have the volume, yeah. Uh, upstream players, you know, will, will likely have the volume, but it comes out this thin kind of shrieky sound and not that's definitely not the sound that I get and not the sound that I'm going for after listening to Maynard and Brees Andre. In fact, Brees Andre, if we had to put a category of the best trumpet sound of all time, probably Brees Andre would be there and he would edge out Maynard. It, it's really hard to beat Brees Andre when it comes to sound. He even sounds great in the upper register. Um, still, my vote for overall brass player and trumpet player has to be for Maynard Ferguson. 
just the pure raw brass player. I'm not counting styles and techniques, just uh, his ability on trumpet. So uh, anyway, and if you look at Maynard, I believe for the most part, he was a downstream player. That's the, my best guess. Um, one of my other heroes, Bud Brisboy, is an upstream player. And you'll notice that his tone, although great most of the time, it just doesn't have the fatness. And you're not getting all the sparkle and the colors, for example, as uh, Maynard Ferguson or Bill Chase. L listen to some of Bud Brisboy's recordings, who's a, who is a definite upstream player. And um, compared to Bill Chase or Maynard Ferguson, there is a difference in sound. So let's go back up here to... Music teacher does not care. Oh, well, yeah, uh, you'll just have to put up with that. Uh, I think my band director got upset when I wanted to go from a seven C through to a three C, or and then I and then I actually got a Claude Gordon bench mouthpiece, and he didn't like that either. So that's cheating. So you got people that have their preconceived notions um, that you deal with as a as a student, and adults have their preconceived notions, and some of them might not be brass players, so they're just kind of regurgitating what they were told in their brass class. I don't know if you know, but all of us band directors, and I'm one or former one, um, you you may or may not know this, but we were all forced to take all the instruments in college, either for a quarter or a semester. So that means, yes, yours truly was doing this for, for a semester and doing this. And no kidding. Uh, and I was also playing oboe and bassoon and saxophone and drums and percussion. And so they make you do all that. So you have uh, an idea about what, it, what somebody else goes through to learn that particular instrument. And, um, and then you have a basic understanding of it. So you can teach it to typically beginners and intermediates. So that's the reason for that. Uh, let's see here. Um, but um, so how can I help you on that one, Elite? Well, like I said, uh, let me see if you answered it. But um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see if you answer my question about um, having, an, having an instructor. So you really do need to have uh, a private instructor Online could be good. I suppose um, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I could check you out on Skype or Zoom. I mean, that could be good, but I still feel for uh, uh, being a student like yourself. And it sounds like you may haven't broke through the intermediate level yet. You're kind of hanging right around there. Probably somebody in your local area that's a good teacher and hopefully a decent player, I, I bet probably they can help you out better than if you try to do something um, online. Um, not to say that we can't help you online. I'm sure I could spend some time with you and you would get better. Uh, but anyway, my opinion is if you can find somebody locally, um, that would be my suggestion for something like that. Um, if, if you're playing offline, I mean, not offline, if you're playing off center and things aren't that great, then yeah, then that the writing's on the wall, right? You, you do want to change that. Um, a guy that plays horribly off center, who can play louder and, and higher than me and obviously better jazz, but I don't think he can play the written high note solo um, as good. Uh, we haven't really put him to the test on that um, because it, he tends to just jazz everything up as John Fattis. And that guy's a, a monster power player, but man, he's got some funky amateur set up. He plays way off, way off to the side. I mean, so off. It's like when he plays, he like has this kind of look. He plays off. They're straight. He plays off, and then he has a tilt to his head. So he's got a tilt, and he plays off center. But um, he just about can't be beat for um, what he does. And what he does is basically jazz, right? So I would like to see um, John Faddis come out and play a written high note solo, which, in my opinion, I think it's kind of fact-based if you check it, is the hardest thing to do on trumpet, the written high note solo. Uh, not the written high solo where you're going to mess around with it, but the written high note solo as as previously performed and made famous by typically a trumpet champion, say like Maynard Ferguson or John Faddis. 
or uh, well, John, not John Faddis, Bill Chase is who I was thinking of. Um, John Faddis does have a couple of things, um, I guess, written ones. But um, anyway, I'd like to hear him come out and play. Let's just say one that I did. How about Gabriel? Have him come out and play Gabriel. When it comes time to do the ad lib and the jazz on Gabriel, yeah, let him let him let John go crazy on it. But what about the part that's written that must be played, the, you know, the way it was meant to be played, how Maynard did it? That would be interesting to see how he does on that without, um, you know, fooling around with it, playing it straight. Almost like if you were going to play uh, Mozart or Debussy um, or Bach, uh, you're not going to get their concerto or their minuet and then totally go crazy with it so that nobody can recognize it. Are you? No. People know those songs and they and know that music, so you play it exactly how it was intended to be played. And that makes, uh, if you cross over to trumpet, it makes playing the written high note solo the most difficult thing to do on trumpet. You're not free to, to change it up. It's very difficult. All right, let's move on here. Okay, Elite, so hopefully that answers your question. I think that you tried to send something, uh, but my parameters here must have blocked it. I'm just looking to see if something came through, Elite. Uh, but I have an um, automated moderator for, for things like that. I can add people to the stream, so I could actually get you up here live with me. Uh, but I'm not sure that's appropriate because that would like to turn into a lesson. And we have a lot of other people that may or may not be interested in that. So um, anyway, that's that at least. But I gave you some good advice. Get a good trumpet instructor. Um, I think that would be your best advice. Uh, my best advice for you to take is, um, you know, j just pay for a couple of lessons. And sometimes you can get a deal and someone will say, hey, we'll, we'll do two lessons for 50 bucks, you know, and do it and just see what they say. Um, I think that you're going to do better that way. Okay, let's see here. Instagram creators, I have a question. What is the best high note mouthpiece, bro? There is no best high note mouthpiece, uh, Instagram creators. We talked about this last week. Cat Anderson played on a 3C, or so I am told. 3C mouthpiece is not a high note mouthpiece or a lead mouthpiece or a commercial mouthpiece. So um, a lot of that tend depends on your teeth, your lips your jaw structure, just your own individual um, human makeup. Um, but if you'd like to know what some of the best high note mouthpieces um, I've used and they've been able to play higher, but you do sacrifice your tone quality in the low register. Uh, the, the, some of the stock mouthpieces are that you should just try right off the bat without even thinking it would be like the Shilke 14A4A. I mean, there's that has to be one of the most popular commercial mouthpieces that especially orchestral principal trumpet players um, will switch to. I'm trying to remember the, the principal trumpet in the Seattle Symphony um, played a gig with me. And, and what was his name? Charlie, dang it. Charlie Butler. I believe Charlie, Charles Butler, Charlie Butler. At that time he had real frizzy hair. This is back in the, when was it? <laughs> this is back either late nineties or 2000, something like that. Uh, but it was a real treat to have him come in, and he played lead on uh, many of the things. Um, he didn't do so good a job as far as style, but he was hitting the notes. And I believe he was using something like a Schulte, a Schulte 14A 4A, and you know he doesn't use that in the symphony, the Seattle Symphony. So that's just one example. Uh, Warburton has some. Um, Perviance, if you haven't heard that name, look on. I don't know if they still sell those new, but for Perviance. I played on one of those a long time ago. Um, you can go to your D's and E's and F's in the Bach series. So if you play on a Bach 3C, you could try a Bach 3E or a Bach 3D. Uh, same thing if you're used to playing 7C, you can go to a D or an E. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, then you got your expensive mouthpieces, Instagram creators, like your um, Monet Prana, you know, 24 karat gold, $300 mouthpiece. 
and then you can get um, custom mouthpieces made. So really, it's an individual thing. But um, I think what I suggested, the Shoki 14A4, is not a bad starting point for you to leap off into playing more commercial stuff. Satisfied person. Hey, well, <laughs> um, all right. If you gave me a shout out on your community tab, that is awesome. And I will take it. I appreciate that. So um, I'm just navigating through here, trying to do my best. I, I wanted to get to everybody. And plus, I kind of have my own agenda. But like I mentioned, I'll set my own personal agenda. I mean, I wanted to get into some home defense stuff today. Um, I got a really cool door stopper. I think some of you guys might be interested, but we'll put that on, on the back burner for right now, uh, answering some of these questions. But anyway, if Elite um, gave me a shout out, that is fantastic. I appreciate that. Okay, let me get to some other uh, comments here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this, um, I know that you're going to get some value out of it. I would like for you to go ahead and click that like button. That tickles the algorithm with YouTube. So this is shown to more people or just it's just put out there where people will see it. Um, if anything I've said so far, you have um, an opinion about. Um, go ahead and leave that opinion in the comment section. And uh, or, you know, what we're doing right now, that'll become a comment after this live stream, live stream turns into a video. And if you could put that little curvy arrow and share it, maybe share it somewhere on a feed like Facebook, that would also be awesome. And if you are not a subscriber, you might as well subscribe. We have a ton of great information here at Trumpet Sizzle. Okay, let me, that was my little power speech there. Let me get on to some more questions here. So um, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, I took a long nap before I got on because I did a bunch of yard work um, up on the ladder all around the house, uh, cleaning out gutters. Sounds like an easy task, right? But so, for me, something about being up on the ladder for a good couple of hours, you know, when it's 90 degrees out, and you, I mean, you're not doing the hardest work in the world, but man, it kind of zonked me out. I had to come back and take a nap, and it got closer to 7, and then 7.15, I thought, oh, man. I just want to keep sleeping, but I, I knew I needed to get up. But other than that, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, let's see here. Okay, Jim, welcome. And in case somebody has joined and I didn't welcome you, I'm welcoming everybody. I'm, I'm trying to give a shout out to everybody. And before I get to your your question or comment there, um, Jim. I'm thinking about doing um, a shout out. It's kind of interesting that satisfied person in Elite did the shout out because um, I talked to some other people unrelated to music that have bigger channels, like with several hundred thousand subscribers. And they said to get more people interested in your channel, more subscribers and things like that, that for from time to time, you should give a shout out to uh, people who comment uh, you, like when I'm actually recording a video, uh, give a shout out to somebody that leaves um, some interesting comments, things like that, and put them up on the screen when you record the video. Um, they also said to give some shout outs to people that do what you do. So find some other people that are that have channels in regards to trumpet and just give them a shout out. Look at some of their videos, find one that you like. So I haven't thought about doing that, but um, I may actually consider doing that. Um, it felt helps the community and helps um, people feel better about everything and better about this channel and subscribing. I'm, I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. It'll be an experiment. So, okay, Jim, let me, let me see here. You're restarting after a long time off. Should I just look for a general trumpet teacher at a local music store or what might you suggest? Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't go that direction. It seems like, um, unless you can find that they have quite a lot of experience working with what I call comeback players. Uh, comeback players have a unique proposition, and that proposition is they have a lot of what you need up in the head, but their body um, is unwilling. <laughs> what, is that, what is that old saying? The, um, 
um, the body is weak, but the spirit is willing. So that tends to be the, the quest for the comeback player. And the reason that's kind of a not so good proposition is because you get a little impatient and you want to, you're anxious to pull out all the books that you've worked on before, right? If you worked on the Arborns, you're anxious to get that out. Uh, if you had a couple of solos from high school or college, you're anxious to get that out and have a little fun with it. Maybe get out your old fight song from either high school or college. So, um, or maybe you put, maybe you save some jazz band music from before. So you're anxious to get out and then you see all the amazing stuff on YouTube, the play lungs and the backing tracks. And then you see um, people that you might like. Maybe it's uh, Miles Davis or Maynard Ferguson or Dizzy Gillespie or Chet Baker. And you and you see the music, you can start playing along. So that's the problem is that you tend to start doing too much gym at one time and it ends up destroying you. In fact, it makes it worse than um, just coming back after having not played for 40 years. Coming back to the horn and not having played for 50 years is my record with comeback players. I actually specialize in teaching comeback players. So 50 years is the longest um, I've had you know, somebody take a break off the horn and come back and they started with me, but it could be five or 10 years. So um, it's actually better to not have played for 50 years and start with somebody who knows what they're doing to get you on the path, um, the right path, than to come back in and kind of fool around with stuff that you've done before and ruin everything for yourself. So. Uh, I would say if you have somebody local and they have a track record, what is a track record? That means that uh, they can point to tons of students that have left both written and video reviews of how great um, their experience was and how much it, this person or a course that they ran helped them. That's a track record. It's fact-based. So I would ask you to look for that, um, not to, not to um, top my own horn, but let me see here, or toot my own horn. Let me go to, uh, I need to change my banner up here. Let's see here. Um, bup, 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 bup. I'll put up this thing about my courses that you can check out. Okay, so if, um, I run uh, the number one rated and the number one, the, the, the number one position course for brass embouchure improvement. And that's backed up by data, backed up by students. I have the most amount of students that have left video reviews talking about that course, who've got the most success. And I have a ton of written reviews as well. And I've checked everybody else out. And what what you tend to see from other people who try to claim that they're, they're way up there near where I'm at, they tend to have their buddies uh, that are also trumpet players saying good thing about the course. Now, you can't trust that. If someone's already a good trumpet player and they're saying this course is amazing, you know, they didn't take the course. They're just patting their friend on the back. So now the, the course that you're watching go through there, that's not the appropriate course for you, Jim, probably. That would be the course for you to take after you get involved with my comeback player course. So I would invite you to go to my channel and you could use my channel as a springboard. Maybe you end up also finding somebody else who has um, good success, a good success rate with returning players and coming back to the horn. But go to trumpetsizzle.com and in the search box, put comeback. And you're going to see a variety of courses that um, pop up. And my recommendation is that you take the live version with me. I have a guy from Australia and his name is Mal. And he's coming up kind of on the end of um, the 20 week course. Now it's a long haul, but it's, it's very easy for the most part. It's um, I'm not so strict and I'm very easy going and you'll end up liking me better in that in the comeback course probably then in the 16 week course, 16 week course, I'm kind of like a drill sergeant um, because I know exactly what's up. I know what you need to be doing and what happens if you're not. And I have an agenda to you for you to get the best results in that course in the 16 week course. Comeback player course is easy going. So I would start there, trumpetsizzle.com, search comeback player. I have a variety of options with that course. The best one is to take from me each week. Um, it's very easy going and get you on the right path. And then I got some invest in some versions where you're not working with me. Yeah, so you, you're just kind of doing it on your own. So if you're that kind of person and you don't want to make a time commitment, um, you can do that. Of course, the investment is a lot less. So I would start there. And then you need to check out the reviews that people have left. And then on YouTube, search Kurt, Tom Kurt Thompson Comeback Player, Kurt Thompson Comeback Review, or Kurt Thompson Trumpet Review. 
and see what pops up. Hopefully there's a lot of people saying nice things about me that have taken my courses. And Jim, the other thing is you need to do the same thing with somebody else. Let's say that you found somebody named Mike Smith and Mike Smith on his trumpet uh, website says, I teach comeback players and they've gotten great results. Well, good. Put in Mike Smith comeback player at YouTube and see if anybody got great, a good enough result that they made a video about it. Okay. Mike Smith, trumpet player, comeback player, Mike Smith, comeback player, or do a Google search and then go on his website and see all the great reviews of the comeback players. Now, if you're not seeing much, this is a good strategy for you, Jim. If you go on to somebody that, that says they they're very good with comeback players and working with them and you find that they have kind of like about that much in the way of reviews, and you really can't find um, anything but maybe a couple of small written reviews on their on their site, but there's there's no other place to verify that or corroborate it. I mean, you might want to just um, pass that person on by. They obviously haven't had a lot of a lot of success. Uh, when you have success, people tend to want to um, say it to other people. Hey, I'm 70 years old. I'm a former engineer uh, with Boeing, and I worked as a structural analyst on the rivets in the V1 bomber. And I used to play and I haven't played for 30 years. And I got I got back on the horn. I got with Kurt and Ma for five months. I can't actually play my horn again. He actually did a pretty good job. I got several reviews like that. That's what you're looking for, Jim. So hopefully that helped you out. Let me move along through here to the comment section. Hey, John Robert Fox. Think about Kara Brass Trumpets. I haven't actually played a lot. I think maybe I played one. Wow. When they first started, I think they first started importing them from China, right? I'm not sure what they're doing with them now, but I want to say that I maybe played on one in 2008, 2009. And I thought it was an okay trumpet. I mean, but I, my opinion doesn't really count so much. I haven't played on too many of them, to be honest with you. So uh, you could probably um, do better and get more information from somebody who, who does. In fact, there are people who are really crazy about uh, Carol Brass. And all you got to do is just search Carol Brass Trumpet Review or something like that on YouTube. And I'm quite certain you're going to see several players actually playing that instrument and talking about it. So I recommend that you do that. Oh, here's Jim again. Uh, there is a mildly famous trumpet professor at a university in town. Is it rude or too presumptuous to try to talk to them about this? No, not at all. I mean, uh, someone who's a trumpet professor or a teacher or band director who's a trumpet player or a professional trumpet player or someone in the symphony, um, that's our job, right? <laughs> um, mo most of us don't just play and not teach. Uh, most of us either want to teach or even have to teach out of necessity. So uh, that's their job uh, if they're at the at the university. Now, I don't know if they do a little freelancing outside of their contract. That would that would be something that might be a little bit different. Uh, maybe they don't take on additional students that are not in the curriculum at the university. But my guess is if you call this person, and if they can help you directly, my guess is that they're going to give you several names in the local area um, that they recommend. So um, I would do that. Just use the protocol that I gave you, Jim, right? Um, whether it's that in fact, take use that protocol on the university professor. Remember, they're your, or think about the university professor. Are they used to working with 60 and 70 year olds who haven't played for 30 years? Or are they used to working with 18 and 19 and 20 year old kids? who are coming in on music scholarships and things like that. Think about that. So the university professor doesn't have much more than maybe five or 10% experience working with comeback players uh, that I can tell. They, they work with young, uh, young men and women and who are typically advanced to very advanced players. And they're not really working with um, Joe Smith, who's um, a CPA accountant and just sold his practice and he's 73 years old and hasn't played in 40 years. They're, they're not specialized 
with those kinds of players. But use my same protocol, Jim. Take that person's name, run it through YouTube, put comeback player or returning, see what pops up as far as reviews. You can't go wrong with that protocol. Bye, said hi from Elite Alpaca. So it looks like I'm getting shout outs from some people. I really appreciate that. That's very kind. And um, yeah, the more shout outs, the better, I think. Okay, so let me see if I can get back here where the. Um... Okay, here we go. Okay, shout out. As I said, I'm doing very, very good. Very, very good, guys. I took a nap. I was up on a ladder for about two hours. You wouldn't think that would be a big deal, would you? Uh, but 90 degrees up on the ladder, messing around with gutters. I don't know. made me tired. <laughs> oh, thanks for the sub, man. You're going to get a lot of good information from this channel. Yes, I do play piano, but I don't play it all the time. In fact, I used to teach... Uh, beginning piano students. I still could do it. I just don't happen to have um, a, I had a spinet piano um, kind of upright spinet that worked out pretty good, but I don't have one of those right now. I'm too busy with other things to teach piano, but I used to teach it to kids and beginning adults. And um, now my piano fingers have probably gotten very rusty. <laughs> I probably have to spend a month to kind of get my, my uh, brain and everything back in gear to play piano. And I'm not Lead them, they don't lead you on. I'm not going to lead you on. Um, I, as far as piano at my best, I was mainly just at the beginning of an intermediate level. Barely. I was past the beginning stage, but because of my knowledge in here, I'm able to teach it. So, I mean, I had all the kids' books too that had the piano key in the book, and we would talk about the notes and things like that. Um, so, anyway, but I got to be an okay level, not good enough for performance or anything like that, but good enough to teach it. That's where I got on piano. You might just have to do some research and find out. That was very nice of Elite. This channel is about all kinds of things, but mainly um, when I'm offline, it's about trumpet and brass playing and music. And every now and then, like once or twice a year, I throw in something political. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Good to have you here tonight. Welcome. Yeah, well, yard work has been kicking my butt lately. I've been digging post holes and repairing gates and fences. And um, when I'm bent over for six hours, um, pouring concrete or doing holes, um, Fence post holes and other stuff. That wears me out. Uh, bent over holding a weed whacker for an hour and a half. Um, doing edging. Um, something about that kind of gets me. It's different than going to the gym where the gym's air conditioned and you got the loud music. And uh, you got everybody, you know, motivating you and you know, indirectly. Um, that doesn't tire me out as much as being outside in 90 degrees or 100 degrees. And you're bent over pulling weeds or you're just bent over the whole time. So that kind of gets me a little bit more. Okay. Let me go through some of these here. I know a man who quit, and 40 years later, he played trumpet perfect. I would say that's the guy who's a comeback player who got a very good result. Hi, Pino, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. A shout out. I'm getting all the shout outs. Great. Depends on what you're doing. In fact, you might want to search my channel. I did a review on the Kelly 
uh, mouthpiece, the screamer, the lead, the lead mouthpiece. Actually, I was surprised. It turned out to be pretty good. So obviously, you wouldn't use that in wind ensemble. You wouldn't use that in concert band. You wouldn't use that in symphonic band. You wouldn't use it in brass quintet or trumpet choir or brass choir, right? Or, you know, to do your juries and recitals. But certainly, if you're in pep band, marching band, jazz band, jazz ensemble, those um, those are the ensembles, yeah, where the Kelly Screamer could be a good one for you. You're welcome, Jim. Check it out and um, use that protocol on everybody, not just me. Um, check out my stuff and then do your research, you know. Um, check somebody else out and do the same protocol. Do your research on them. Check out your university professor. Put their name in YouTube. Can you find them playing? Most of these guys, you can't find them playing anything. But if you said he's a little famous, so well, maybe he does play. So uh, search him, find him playing something. And then you want to find out independently what former students are saying about this individual um, if they paid them, paid him money especially to help him out with the with them returning to the horn you want to find out hey did they get a good result and uh, that's important but like i said if you just use your noggin let's use our noggin folks let's use what's behind here let's use that university professor is there to help out college kids now, every now and then you get the atypical college student who might be 40 years old. But basically, they're helping out 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old, up to about 25-year-old uh, people. These people are typically very good players to awesome players. They're not slouches because a lot of them are there because of uh, music scholarships and things like that. That's a whole different teaching uh, mindset, at least for me, if I'm going to work with you and you're really that good. I'm going to be structuring things differently. There's a whole different style and approach that must be taken with somebody who hasn't spent their whole life being a professional musician. You know, like I said, maybe they were a, um, an engineer at um, Rockwell or an IT manager at Cisco. And that's they. So in other words, they made a lot of money, but they didn't play their horn and they haven't played their horn. That requires a whole different approach that probably 99% of these university professors um, don't have. So you got to check that out. Be certain. Bible Flox Box. That's pretty, that's a very creative name. I like it. And um, yeah, I think I already said thank you to Elite Alpaca. I, I've already talked, gave some time to Elite Alpaca and said thank you. And so I appreciate that. How many instruments do you play? Well, as I just, if you go back and rewind this, as a band director, you're required to play them all before you graduate. You're tested on all the instruments. Uh, they don't test you on guitar, electric guitar. Uh, they don't test you on electric bass, uh, but they do test you on upright brace, uh, the bass of uh, viol. They test you on that. So, um, uh, at one point, I had to play most of the traditional musics. Now, I didn't have to play, um, you know, harpsichord, accordion, harmonica, um, tambourine. <laughs> um, so, um, and but you have to also, I minored in piano in college. So, I had to play quite a bit uh, of piano, some various uh, minuets, concertos, smaller ones all the scales, major and minor scales, the national anthem and things like that uh, to get the minor. All right, Mr. Beast gave me a shout out. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You got another Bible study person. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Still getting lots of shout out and Leet is still here. Good. Jomel Samuel. Sometimes I feel like I can't get enough air into my mouthpiece. Um, I sometimes feel that way myself. And 
Um, part of it might be that you're blowing too much air into the mouthpiece and you're not calibrating it. Uh, maybe you have too much lip into the mouthpiece. Uh, maybe your lips are pressed too close together and you need to back off on that a little bit and open up the aperture a little bit. So there's, there's a couple of different reasons why you might be feeling that way. Um, also, it could be that if you're playing into a mouthpiece that's relatively shallow or smaller, and you're playing into a medium large bore horn or medium horn, you could have that same effect. I've had, we talked about that last week when I talked about that I've changed my philosophy of always trying to play on the smallest equipment that gives you the best tone. I now have changed it to playing on small and large or large and small. Um, I just feel like the efficiency is better. So if you have a shallower mouthpiece, try to make sure you're playing into a larger medium large horn or a large bore horn. I believe that you're going to be better suited. You're going to get um, a better tone, better endurance. It's going to be a more efficient setup. On the other hand, if you love a larger mouthpiece, let's say a lot of people love that Bach one and a half C. So if you're playing on a Bach one and a half C, then you could bring your horn bore size down a little bit below the typical four five nine. You could bring it down to a four five two or a four five zero, which would put you in the medium range. And you might just notice that combination of that Bach 1.5C and a smaller bore, not a small bore, but a smaller bore than the typical 459. You might notice that that setup is actually pretty good for you. Um, let me take a quick break, like 10 second break here. Okay, Jamal, I, if you listen, I just kind of. I've told you a little bit about that, what you should do. Kegita, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, my name is Kurt. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, the tonight's show. So um, um, I have noticed that, um, oh, wait a minute. I got, did I skip over? I think I skipped over some people. I'm sorry about that, John. If I skipped over you, but it's not intentional, so don't be offended. If for some reason I skipped over you, please send do your comment again, copy paste it again. Um, I, I'm sorry, John. Looks like I maybe didn't address yours, John Robert, or maybe now now maybe I did. I play on them myself. I play on a Carol Brass six two eight zero trumpet. It's like a Bach one ninety S. Oh, you mean like oh like the Bach commercial series? Um, that would. So what's the difference in price? Um, I've done a review on the Bach uh, commercial trumpet, and those were. Over a little over three thousand, right? I did it a couple of years ago, right around that time. I think they're around thirty two hundred. Yeah, they're a little pricey. So if you feel like the Carol Brass sixty two eighty is similar to that, I'd be curious what the price is. Is it three thousand dollars? Because if it's under that, that might be a horn for people to take a look at. So thanks for that comment, John. Uh, let's see, is there anybody else that I missed? <laughs> um. Jaw Blaster, I, I missed you. Okay, so yeah, thanks again for that about Elite. We got that. I've already talked to and addressed Elite and said thank you for his shout outs or her shout outs. So uh, let's see, anything else here? All right, where are we at time wise? Okay, we're approaching an hour. Last week I was trying to. Um, I was trying to cut cut out around an hour. Maybe we'll be able to do that today because um, uh, an hour and a half. I don't. I don't know if people are going to go for an hour and a half. I don't know if people have been doing it. it Seems like they have though. Okay, let me get to. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Oh, thanks. Oh, eighteen hundred. So uh, this is going. We're talking about the difference in the Carol Brass trumpet. Um, versus the Bach 190 commercial series. And uh, so a couple of years ago, I reviewed, you can find it on my channel here, the Bach commercial trumpet. And I thought it was a pretty decent trumpet, but it's over 3000 I guess it's probably even more now. So $1,800, uh, that would be quite a value if it plays close to that commercial trumpet and it's half the price. John, that's, that's saying something there. So thanks for letting us know about that. Okay, let's see what else can we talk about here. Um, let's see. Let me go to. Uh, 
I'm gonna do a quick, quick little section on. Check that out. That is the Nightlock uh, door jam, the Nightlock door jam, and uh, we, we can talk more about that probably next time. But I highly recommend that you look for that, the Nightlock door jam. Um, I own a couple of those. Man, those bad boys won't allow your door to open up. It doesn't matter who's trying to break through, police, SWAT team, home invaders. Um, you have to break completely through the door. I mean, break the door in half to come in. It's an amazing um, home defense mechanism. I'm trying to remember what I paid for it, maybe $50 or $60. Maybe it's gone up in price. But um, if you want to be safer and sleep more soundly at home, or if you live in a bad area, this just screws into your floor. Now, I realize if you're in an apartment complex, you probably can't do that. Um, but if you're in a rental home, I would maybe ask your landlord and see if you're able to put that in. And you could just put some wood filler in the holes if you had to remove that when you when your lease is up. But this one allows you to go to bed at night and someone just can't kick in your door. You know, you can, you'll hear the noise. You can call 911. You can get to your safe place or get out your pepper spray or whatever you got to protect yourself. But it's just nice to have something like this. So when you're asleep and if someone's trying to do something criminal around where you live, especially if you live in a bad area, this is really going to stump them. They're not going to be able to just kick your door and kind of come in. They're going to probably have to kick it 10 or 15 or 20 times, probably more than 10 times. So anyway, I highly recommend that you check that. By the way, I'm not affiliated with Nightlock. Um, I do have a link, an affiliate link, but I don't even have that in the description. <laughs> so if you want to know exactly where to get it, where I do have an affiliate link. I just haven't put it in the description. I probably should put all these in the description. Uh, I wasn't really going to go into the home security thing this time, but um, probably more next time we'll talk about that. But I'll have all the links. I'll make a note for myself to put all these links where you can get directly and not have to mess around with it. You can get it on Amazon, uh, but watch a couple of reviews. Um, I don't, you know, not everybody is security conscious like me. I'll take that off. Not everybody is security conscious like me, but um, doggone it, when I go to bed, guess what? Um, I don't want to have to worry about any idiot um, and their friends that are all pumped up on meth or fentanyl, um, high, and they've run out of money and they, they uh, their drug dealer says, man, you got to bring me 20 if you want another whatever. So they, they want to go break down someone's door and steal something or 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 hold you up um, because they need to get their fix. So uh, I'm not going to go to sleep at night and have to worry about someone easily kicking in my door. So um, and maybe you're like me. Now, I know some of you could care less and you're thinking that would never happen to you. But unfortunately, people that think that stuff like that never happens to them, aren't they the people that you always see on the news where they say, oh, I can't believe that would happen here in this neighborhood. So you might want to be careful about, about thinking that way. So if you're like me and when you go to sleep and you turn the light off and you don't just don't want to have to deal with any um, monkey business, get you the night lock. And we can talk more about that. There's some good reviews. In fact, there's even one where um, the police uh, participated in this experiment and the police are they're trying to pry the store open that has a reverse not uh, a reverse night lock on it and they tear up the entire door in the frame but they st still can't get that door to open and it's a pretty sturdy uh, in shape uh, police SWAT guy that's using a battering ram and using um, um, a pry bar a crowbar everything else can't get the door open so it's just nice to know that uh, for a small amount of money, you got something like this that can buy you some time so you can wake up, you know, uh, three o'clock in the morning. What is that? Someone's trying to break my my house down. You get up, call, call 911 right away and then go pick up your pepper spray or your bat or whatever that you got. And at least it gives you, buys you some time. So you, you don't just have a group of um, meth heads that are right on top of you when you're just waking up. I mean, that's the last thing that you want. And uh, why am I bringing that up? Because it's happening all the freaking time, all the time, all the time. Um, turn on YouTube and, and put in home invasion and burglary. And I mean, every other couple of days, um, all across America, especially, uh, people are having to deal with this. And so 
a burglary occurs once every 15 seconds. 85% um, of all home invasion and burglaries are people kicking in your door. Uh, I don't want to be asleep and have to deal with that. I want to have a little time to call 911, a little time to get to um, some home defense stuff that I have. So you might be like me. On the other hand, if you don't care about it, then you can roll the dice and take your chances. If I was listening to somebody like myself and I was 19 years old, I'd probably, I'd probably say, oh, screw it, I don't care about it. You know, that's not going to happen here because I'm young and stupid, right? Uh, but um, it's kind of funny how when you're 19, you feel like you're smarter than everybody. And by the time you go from 19 to 30, you realize that you're um, dumber than a lot of people. Isn't that amazing? Uh, for those of you who have made that transition from 19 to 30, remember how you knew everything at 19. Um, and then for some reason, you got dumber. And then by the time you got to be 30, you realize, oh, I'm not as smart as I was when I was 19. <laughs> know what I'm talking about? So yeah, if you're young and you're hearing this, you're probably thinking it's a crock. You don't need to worry about it. It's BS. Um, if you're older and you've been around the block, you know that I'm, what I'm talking about is truth. So let's see what else we got going on here, folks. Let me put, put up a nice little banner here. So, okay, we'll go back to some comments. So, where do we leave off here? Okay, we left off with Jim. Have a good night, Jim. Try those uh, gambits and protocols. I think uh, it'll serve you well. Um, okay, let's see here. Hype, Kurt, you're awesome. Well, appreciate that. Thanks for the compliment. I will say thank you very much. I accept your compliment. That's very nice. Well, I'm glad you saw that Quad C video. That's very cool. Can you do a review on the Besson Prestige 2028 Cornette? I probably could. I don't have that particular instrument with me. I don't own one. Um, so I tend to do right, my reviews, if you notice, I tend to do them around Thanksgiving up until the end of the year. And so I will be looking for some brass accessories and maybe a few instruments to check out and do some reviews on. Um, Hype, I would recommend you email me or leave in a comment. Um, you know my email, Kurt at trepidsizzle.com. Um, so let me put my email for all those to see. Okay, so let's see here. If I can get that up there. Let me store it up there real quick, and then I'll get to, back to other people. So there we go. Uh, send an email around Halloween. And I get a lot of those. So I'll, I'll sort through yours and others, and um, maybe I will get that coordinate. Who knows? I'm not going to promise anything, but maybe I will get it. If you think it's a good one, uh, maybe I'll get it. And... Um, if I like it, I'll do a review on it and we'll let others um, make a decision on if they thought it was a good one or not. So that's my email, folks. Let's see what else here. Let me get back to where I was. So anyway, hi, thanks for your comment there on the cornet. But again, um, pop back in around Halloween, right around that time. That's when I start looking at stuff to do reviews on. You're welcome, Jamal. You're welcome. Hey, our good friend Dom is here again. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're, oh, you're responding about the home invasion stuff. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of us in Texas who also have that. But unfortunately, um, a lot of people that are armed end up getting killed because the way it works, Dom, is you're going to have three or four uh, men Typically around that, you're not going to have one solo guy coming in. So there's going to be three or four people. They're going to be men. They're going to be probably between 19 and about 25 years of age. They're going to burst in on you when you're watching TV. A lot of times they'll try to look through your blinds or they'll, try to, or they'll listen for a TV. Or they're going to burst in when you're sleeping. 
these guys are not going to be, you know, carrying water guns. Uh, most of these guys will have um, automatic weapon, you know, nine millimeters. One guy might have an AR-15. Um, so they're all going to be armed. And you got three or four guys coming. Now, if they wake you up in the middle of the night and they can break down your door, you don't have that night hawk that, and the, the night lock. You just got a chain on your door. You know, um, some in my size, I can come right through your door. Deadbolt, you got a chain, you got a deadbolt. Uh, I'm telling you, 240 pounds, 6'3", I can bulldoze through that in, in two, no more than two strikes with my shoulder. I can guarantee I can knock your, your hardwood front door down. So even if it's steel, I'm still going to come through there. Now, three guys um, or four guys that are all hopped up on meth, Dom, think about that. Um, maybe they're high on fentanyl and maybe they've just toped and smoked a bunch of crystal. That makes you even more super strong. They're, they're fearless. They don't care if you're pointing a, a shotgun at them or nothing, but they got their own shotguns. But they're going to come in right when you're watching TV, maybe with your wife or family, or when you're asleep. If you don't have your door secured, it doesn't matter. Um, maybe if you're sleeping with uh, your, um, your 357 under your pillow, maybe, maybe, Dom, maybe you might be lucky enough, but you pull that gun out and you got three teenagers, that are all hyped up and drugged up and they all got guns, what do you think your chances are? No, you're gonna buy the farm right there, Dom. It's all over for you, it's all she wrote. You have to do something to buy yourself time to keep these people from kicking your door in and quickly getting at you. Um, and then, I mean, how many people have a 357 on their pillow in their lap while they're watching Jeopardy, you know, or watching the news in their living room? You don't. I can guarantee that you don't. So they get you that way too. They listen to see if they listen carefully to see what you're doing before they kick open the door. If they can hear a TV going, they're like, this guy, we own this guy or whoever it is inside when we kick the door and we own them. They come in, they got all the guns at you. You don't have time for nothing. My, so my point is, I'm down. It's good that you got that because you will need that. But you want time to call 911 so you can get the police coming there if you don't live too far out in the boonies. And then, yeah, you, then you got time to go um, get your weapons and then go to a safe spot or lock yourself somewhere where maybe they won't find you right away. And then you have that shotgun, um, I would be sitting down. That way, at least if they shoot, you're going to be a little bit lower than, um, you know, we're, probably what they're aiming for. And you have your shotgun, you have your weapons loaded and ready to to uh, let some lead, hot lead fly at them. Um, if they find where you're at, where you're hiding in the house. Uh, so that's what you got to do. Um, take it from me. That you don't want to be um, have false um, a false sense of security because you have guns when you got 20-year-old kids that are hyped up on meth that have guns, and there's three of them or four of them. And uh, let me tell you something. It doesn't end well. It doesn't end well at all. Uh, unless you were able to stop them from breaking your door open. You know, many of these people can break your door open in one kick and you don't want that. Um, you, it's just too much time um, for them to come in and get you and you not enough time to get to call 911 and get your stuff. So that's what I have to say about that, Dom. Okay, Gita. Kurt, from the first time that I watched your videos three, three years ago, I immediately realized that you were unapologetically arrogant. Unapologetically arrogant. So I had no other choice, no other choice but to subscribe to your channel. Really? I'm unapologetically arrogant. Wow, I've never been. Does anybody ever call me arrogant? Hmm. No, they never have. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate that. At least you subscribe. That ends well. Hi. Good night, and thank you for being a part of tonight's live stream. Let's see, I'm getting behind here.
Li Wu, Li Wu Jin. Hey, Kurt. I'm a female trumpet player in Korea. Pretty rare. Ha ha. Really? I I have a couple of um, um, Asian students, believe it or not. And, and there's a, one guy from Korea, South Korea, business guy. Um, I've lost track with, of him in communication, but he used to be on my channel in a review. So um, he's a beginning player. Uh, let's see what else. Can I ask legitimately where in the world would you currently rate yourself in terms of trumpet players? Oh, I like to rank myself by height. And so I would say I'm definitely um, maybe in the top 1% or half of, of a percent there. So I'm 6'3", and I'm not skinny, and I'm not fat. You know, trumpet players, have you thought about this? Trumpet players tend to be either too skinny or too fat. <laughs> it's not like you have a trumpet player that has a well-balanced, healthy lifestyle. I don't know what it is about trumpet players. Uh, did you notice that? Uh, think of your best trumpet players. You got Reese Andre, he's fat. You got uh, Maynard Ferguson, who really, really got fat. Um, even Wynton Marsalis is kind of putting on the weight, although he's he's not too fat. I mean, he's gained some weight. You got John Fattis, who's also um, pretty fat, pretty heavy guy. Um, and then you got someone like Alan Vizzuti. He's probably, you know, 140 pounds dripping wet, maybe 150. I mean, just like a bean pole, right? Um, uh, who are, who are some other ones? Um, I'm trying to think, um, right. Up, I'm trying to think of, well, Bill, Bill Chase was relatively skinny, but you know, we didn't get to see him age and see if he was going to gain weight or not, but he was decently kind of skinny, but uh, not super skinny. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I just measure myself by height. How do I measure myself and rank myself with other trumpet players? Lee is definitely by height. And um, when it comes to height, I win. Okay, I win. I'm glad you asked that question, Lee. It was a very, very good observation of you. Oh, you're asking another question, Lee. Oh, thanks. Thank you for question number two. Totally agree with your Wayne Bergeron rant in one of your last videos. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's a, when I, at the end of that live stream, I told people, hey, if you don't believe what I said, research it for yourself. And if, um, Lee, I would encourage you to go back to last week's live stream. Somebody left a comment on there. I should probably uh, maybe screenshot it and put it up here on the live stream. They said they found Wayne Bergeron playing a live concert, playing Maynard Ferguson's Gabriel, like like I did um, a long time ago when I did a joint concert with the Airman of Notes, uh, Airman of Note. And he said, oh, he played it much better. Uh, played it with uh, no uh, no music, no stand. And so I asked that guy, I said, well, I, I've never seen that. But I said, if, if you found that, then I would have to, um, I'd have to eat my words and eat and swallow down some humble pie. But um, I haven't seen that, so I don't know. Maybe that was just a hater. But um, someone else commented last week, and you can go back to the live stream and look at the comments. I said, hey, you're not as good as Wayne in the studio. You can't beat him in the studio. And you know what I did? I'd agreed with that commenter because um, um, I haven't been doing studio stuff. I mean, especially religiously day in and day out, like our lovable uh, Mr. Bergeron. No. So I agree with that person and said, no, I don't, I don't think I could. Not right now. Um, years ago, I probably could have. Uh, I was doing a, a decent amount of session work and I got pretty good at it. Um, sight reading, coming in, being on the money. You kind of get in that groove, and uh, I haven't been in the groove of doing um, you know, the sight reading deal. So I agree with that commenter said, no, I bet he probably could beat me when it comes to session work. Yeah, I'm not going to argue on that one. Yeah, Dom, you got to think about that. Think ahead. Um, you can even watch. Um, there's so many videos of of. Um, CCTV video of, of hold uppers and people that are armed. They're concealed CCWs, you know, concealed weapon carry that got killed because, uh, and not, I'm not talking about home invasion. I'm just talking about being out and about uh, because the bad guys got the draw on them. You got two or three people. It's, it's, it's hard to defend yourself against two or three thugs, especially if one or more of them is armed. I'm talking about a, nor a normal course of your daily activity, like at your car or at a store or 
whatever rocking around a park it's it's really tough if uh, and that's if you're carrying uh, if you're carrying that's still tough so um, at home yeah you got to have your door hardened and as far as your window um, we have double and triple pane storm windows so not that they can't be broken but because they can be broken but when you do break a storm window they're just loud it just sounds like a thunderbolt and the it, it, it's an unusual sound so it's very difficult and it would be very difficult for someone to break through and just come through lollygagging within a second uh, they're hard to break but you can break them you're going to have a lot of jagged glass and they have to make all this noise it's going to be heard by the neighbors it's an unusual sound and then you hear them smashing out the glass to be able to get in that's going to take some time that will definitely uh, wake me up uh, but it'll wake up the neighborhood it's like a big thunderclap so uh, and then i have wooden dowels in all my windows on each side so if they broke the window and they went like this um to get the lock so they could push it up they're not going to be able to <laughs> surprise surprise bad guys no they're going to have to come through and get ripped apart by the shards of glass that are going like this in the window after they broke it and so that's going to cut them all up if they come through the window like that and that's going to definitely leave their dna all over the place so uh, you got to think through all this uh, but yeah you want to uh, anybody that wants to break in can break into your place. They can break into my place. You just want them to have a lot of trouble doing so. So that will buy you time uh, to call 911. That's the goal on, on all this. Uh, is don't don't ever think that your 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 house is going to be such a fortress that somebody can't break in. Some I think most people will be able to break into just about any any place. It's just a matter of how long will it take them to do that and how noisy will it be. And will the police be able to get there by the time they actually get in? So, I mean, th those are the things you want to think about. You want to make those people that are probably not thinking correctly, you know, high on dope, meth, fentanyl, whatever it is, crystal that they're taking, and they're not thinking that clearly, and you want them to have trouble getting in. They probably will eventually get in, but you hopefully the cops will be there by that point, or you and your 357 will have a little surprise for them. So... Um, Instagram creators, he lost 9,000 subs. Well, whoever that was, that's that's kind of unfortunate. Let me change up my banner here real quick. Okay, good comments. There we go, grilled cheese. How do you play high on the trumpet? I'm really struggling with this. Everybody struggles with playing high on the trumpet. Even I do sometimes. <laughs> not all the time, not most of the time, but occasionally it happens. Uh, that's just, uh, it's the hardest technique to, to master. And I would have to say decently I've mastered it, but does it, that doesn't mean that it's mastered 100% of the time. It doesn't mean I don't have my troubles because I do. And uh, yeah, so doesn't mean I don't struggle with it because sometimes I do. But um, anyway, I have got a good portion of that mastered. And so there's a lot that goes into it. There's actually a process, not one device, not one little gambit, not one little technique that you're going to work on. And you're going to wake up in six months and be the world's best high note trumpet player of all time. It doesn't work that way. There's a process. A systematic process and approach to borrow words from somebody else that you're going to have to go through. So everybody has that struggle. You're not alone, grilled cheese. Um, now um, let me put up another banner there um, to kind of toot my own horn again. Let's see here. The 16-week 2019 revised upper register course is the number one course for amateur improvement in the world, bar none, no question, no debate. That's backed up by the tons of students that have taken that course and the people that have actually gone the extra mile and left um, written comments, but mainly more importantly than that, video reviews of them playing, talking about and demonstrating what they got out of the course. You can't find a course that even comes close to it. I would highly recommend that you check into that. And let's see here. Uh, if you look at, let me put that back up there one more time. If you go back to, let's see here. 
Okay, if you look down, no, that way. There, trumpetsizzle.com. Go there and check out that course. I got a version for students who work at Kroger or Safeway and they make $80 a week and they don't have a lot of money. I have a weekly version that allows you to get in for around 25 bucks a week. That's it, no commitment. You just go week by week. I got a version where um, you do it all on your own, but you don't have any help from me. But that's okay. I mean, but the best version really is if you can afford it and, and get some money from friends, family, or a spouse, parents, or if you got money saved up, is to just take the live version with me weekly uh, because things come up. Um, 100% guaranteed you're going to be doing something wrong in my course if you're trying to teach yourself and you're not with me each week. It's just guaranteed. So um, your best bet is to take that course. It's like a college course. You take it with me each week. And I'll pound on you each week for 16 weeks until you achieve your goals. And I will make you achieve your goals. Uh, I guarantee it. Uh, but you, I'll be like a drill sergeant. I'll be right on, right, right behind your neck, breathing down your 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 throat and your. You're not going to like some of it, but I'm going to make sure that you can play high and you are a stronger, a better player after the, those four months. So trumpetsizzle.com see what we got here thanks for that question grilled cheese but it is possible but it's just you can't be lazy and you can't be a procrastinator and also you can't expect something for nothing in this world you get what you pay for so uh, you want to truly achieve that you have to invest your money just like if i wanted to become a fantastic attorney like alan dershowitz Am I going to watch youtube videos on people talking about the constitution and people talking about how to argue in court or am I going to pony up and spend the $50,000 um, a year and go to Harvard? Which one? You got to pony up and you got to spend the money. You know, go study with Alan Dershowitz or somebody like that. Uh, you got to do it. You got you got to invest um, your money. You get what you pay for in life. Uh, there's people that are older know that for sure. Um, sometimes when you're younger, uh, you think that somehow you can kind of get around that, but usually you can't. Let's go on to another comment. PM, lip buzzing, mouthpiece buzzing, lip pipe buzzing. Do you have an order you usually do them in? Well, when it comes to lip buzzing, that's the first thing I do every day. The first thing I do before I even get out the horn, I'll just go, bum. <laughs> I think I got down to the triple pedal C. I mean, I just did that off the cuff. That is the first thing I do every day. The low relaxed triple pedal C. Lip buzz down to triple pedal C. And I'll, because it's late and I already kind of um, blew up my chops earlier, uh, came out rough. But a lot of times in the morning, it'll come out. I'm relaxed. It'll come out. I'll be able to hit all the partials and get the notes and everything. It sound like a real scale all the way down. So I do my, my low, relax, low relax lip buzz. Then I do my range building lip buzz. Um, mouthpiece buzzing, I hit or miss on that one. Lead pipe buzzing, hit or miss on that one. I don't do those every day, but I do certainly do them every week. Um, but the rim buzzing, the rim buzzing, you left that out. The rim buzzing is almost the most, most important of all of those, almost. The rim buzzing comes after my lip buzzing. In fact, I've done my lip buzzing. I, I probably could do a couple more minutes of it um, sometime tonight. So rim buzzing. We're talking about the no mouthpiece, just the rim, the cutoff rim. Uh, that's what I would do after my lip buzzing. But the good question, PM, thank you. All right, Elite, thanks for the shout out. Um, several people said that you gave me a shout out. I'll check it out later. Uh, but I really appreciate that, Elite. That's very cool. Thank you and have a good night. Kikita, I love you for it. You said to purchase a con Prion, so I purchased seven. Wow. Someone's got some big cha-ching, some deep pockets, huh? Five trumpets, two cornets. I've not played through them. 
uh, play them through. Um, still saving up money to take your course after 26 years off. Well, like I just mentioned about the course, the Comeback Player course also has many versions. Uh, you could start off on the weekly version if you like. It's like 20, so about the same, 25 bucks, give or take, every week. Um, the reason I did that is I have students um, that um, are on a fixed income. When I say students, they could be 60 or 70 years of age. Um, they Maybe they didn't plan for retirement that well, and so they got their Social Security and a little something from their 401k, and they're just kind of barely making it meet, ends meet. So they can't pull the trigger and, you know, send, you know, eight nine hundred dollars uh, for the full comeback player course. And so these um, these folks can swallow, you know, twenty five dollars a week. They can handle that. So you if um, if you're in that situation or that predicament, um, I would recommend that. And then if you do end up with more money, you can always transition to the course, the full course. And for folks that do that, I allow them to get a full credit on what they paid weekly into the full. So anyway, something to think about, but it'll allow you to get in. The five, the comeback player course is a long, long, slow course. It's five months long. You might as well get involved in it now. It starts off very, very slow. And uh, you can get into that. And who knows, maybe a month or two into it, you might decide that you want to switch into the live version and I can give you credit for what you paid and um, you can go that route. Anyway, thanks for that um, um, information. And you should see that, um, I believe it's down here, you should see that the um, my site's there. You can just search Comeback Player at trumpetsizzle.com. Oh, we're at an hour and 23 minutes. Maybe it's almost, almost quitting time here. Let's see. Okay, we'll see you next time, Elite. Hype. D Yo, Kurt. You have some beef with a bloke named Stan Mark or Smith? I think I remember seeing a little comment encounter between you. It's hard telling. Um there is a Stan Mark that I know of who played lead trumpet with Maynard Ferguson for a long time. And it's hard, it's hard saying. I tend to get, didn't have a beef or getting problems with when people pull down their pants and they squat over and take a big dump all over my post or my comment or my video. And so when people do that, that's when, yeah, that's when you'll see a, a beef quickly develop between me and that other person. So if that happened, um, then I would say probably there might have been something there, but I don't really remember it. Um, it's very almost non-existence or rare for me just to be tickling around through the internet or on my phone and say, there's somebody that I'd like to start a beef with. There's somebody that I'm just going to say a bunch of crap to them just to see what happens. I don't do that. Okay. Um, for one thing, I'm just way too busy. Like I got a million things to do when I get done with this live stream including a little bit of practice. I got most of it in today, but I got a bunch of other stuff to do. Um, I got I got to work on my channel. There's some things I need to improve about my thumbnails, things about titling, some mega, mega data stuff I got to improve, uh, metadata. And then there's some stuff um, I'm working with the government on some grants and I got to fool around with that. And, and then I got some other things. I'm also writing a book, um, um, a flexibility book for brass players. I don't think I'll get to that tonight, but I don't have time to to go on and look for somebody and say say a bunch of crap and hopefully to get something started. So 99 to almost 100% of the time, if, if you've seen any bad interaction with me and somebody else online, almost always it's because they pulled down their pants, they bent over, and they took a nice big dump on something that I wrote or something that I did or a video. And, um, and then I had to uh, respond to that sometimes, but lately now I've just been ignoring all that. I just don't have the time to get into it with people. Uh, years ago, I, I had, I had more time and I would get into it with people. And, um, and a lot of times I found myself getting into it with people who were anonymous. So I stopped doing that. You know, why talk to somebody who's not uh, man enough or woman enough to use their first and last name? So if I found that people are doing that, if they're anonymous, a lot of times I just, you know, say sayonara, because uh, who knows you what you're what you're dealing with? Like you're anonymous right now. I'm so um, I don't know who you are, but I mean, if you were to make a bunch of comments like that, I'm probably not going to 
get into it because who are you? I mean, now if you had your first and last name, then I might then I might respond back. So anyway, that's that. But Stan Mark, I don't remember. It's possible. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. Um, I'm in that situation. I plan to do that soon. Oh, about the con and uh, oh, about the course. Yeah, the courses. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's a long course. Anybody who's watching that has um, taken the comeback player course, they know it starts off like a sleeper, like a sleeper course. It's very slow. It's at your own pace. It's kind of the opposite of the 16 week course, which is very intense. Uh, there's a lot of intense and energy in that course, and there it's all mandated. It's not, you know, go at your own pace in that course. Comeback player is sleepy, and it just it just starts off that way. But it, it does get cooking about halfway through. But that's the whole nature of being a comeback player. You got to kind of warm yourself up to it. And anyway, uh, so that's that. So thanks for that. Um, Jamal would like to know where you purchased your cons, Kegita. So if you can leave that in the comment, you could. Or maybe you already did. Oh, eBay. Con directors. Okay. The best cons that I played on, um, just for my opinion on for you guys, is if you could find the con 38B. 38B like boy, 38B. Con 38B. That horn's a pretty kick-ass horn, I'm here to tell you. You're going to find, it's now it's a, a small medium bore, but you're going to find that it actually puts out some big sound. Um, it, it's the one thing I didn't like about the valves. They kept my, the one that I had was a little clicky. So, um, con 38B, and then depending on which one you get, they make several versions of the con 22B, 22B, be like boy. And some of them play amazingly well. I had one a couple of years ago that I ended up selling, it was actually pretty decent. And some of them play like student horns, but there's a couple of version of the of the Con 22B that are pro versions, and so you want to. They were made in in different years, so you want to look for the research the one that would be the pro version, and uh, try a couple of the Con 22Bs because um, those are still holding their own today. The Con directors, I guess it just depends. Um, I always thought of the director more as kind of a student or intermediate horn. Uh, and because of that, you might get a better deal. Now, the 22Bs, especially the pro versions, you might end up paying, you know, paying a pretty penny for it. The 38Bs, you are going to pay a pretty penny for that because they're such great horns, and uh, they're also looked at as collector items, too. Okay. All right, guys, where are we at here? Let me change my banner one more time. Yeah, it's been an hour and a half. We're, get, we're gonna get ready to close up shop. We still got some folks watching. Uh, I found that um, it seems like we have kind of a small amount of people that are just watching. We got a lot of people that comment, but as soon as I shut this down, all of a sudden the, there, a lot of people are looking at it. <laughs> so I don't know if people are scared of me and they're scared to get on the live stream. We are live right now. And they don't want to get on live because they don't know what will happen. And so as soon as this live stream ends and YouTube turns it into a normal video, it seems like that's when people feel like it's safe. They, they pull out the blanket and they look around like, OK, nobody's watching. Let me OK, let me go ahead and watch that video that Kurt made. Now it's not live. So uh, I thought that's kind of interesting. Well, you can look at the other live streams, you know, just uh, a, a couple of views when we're live. And as soon as it turns into a video, then, you know, all of a sudden these, these people come out of the woodwork and start looking at it. So I find that kind of funny and kind of interesting because it seems like people would want to react a little bit in uh, real time as opposed to just watching the recorded version at another time. But um, to each their own. But that's what I've been noticing. All right, guys. So let's see what else we can throw in here before we get ready to say good night. Please do this. All right. So, yeah, if you haven't um, already become a subscriber, I'm telling you, there's 2,000 videos or close to it on this channel with a ton of free information. I mean, I don't know how long it would take you to watch all the videos, but there's stuff from mouthpieces to horns to breathing to compression 
to pedal tones, to high notes, to technique, to sound, to tone, to scales, even a little bit of jazz, some ear training. Uh, there's a lot of value in this channel uh, for just about anybody, any brass player. And so I welcome you as a subscriber. You're going to get value. You're going to find it here. Any other questions, comments, whatever, before we get ready to say good night or good morning, depending on where you're watching this. Some people might be over in Zimbabwe watching this, right? Or, or maybe over in the Middle East, and maybe it's morning time for you guys. Um, but um, wherever you're watching this, we're about ready to pull the plug here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, looks like we got maybe one more comment coming in. Yeah, let's see here. Oh, more about these horns, yeah. Directors are student grade. I purchased them for the bell. Hope to eventually get it refurbished. Yeah. I play on the director, but yeah, I do remember them being, you know, I'm not a big techie and a, I'm not a gear fanatic when it comes to most stuff. So I don't have all the model numbers and the serial numbers. And this this horn was made of this serial number between, you know, 1950 and 1956. And then we switched over to this and they changed the third bell. I'm not that kind of a person. So I'm not like a real gear techie, but I have an overall arching kind of viewpoint of um, um, of some of these. And um, if you can get, yeah, the the Caprines, uh, um, if you can get that, I wanted I wanted to say uh, the 10B is another good one. The, the, I believe the the Con Caprine 10B, 10, and then be like boy. I believe some of those are professional, and I believe you'll be pretty happy with those. So, um, but anyway, you can, yeah, whatever you want to do with the directors, that's fine. So, um, Hey, Tim, thanks. Kurt. enjoyed your videos. I will. I definitely will. Thank you for being a part of our program tonight. And it looks like you might be one of our last commenters because we're getting ready to say uh, good night. And let's see. In fact, we're going to do that now. It's nine 30. And I'm still tired from doing all the gutter work I did today and being up on that ladder and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sign out, folks. This is Kurt Thompson completing yet another live stream here on YouTube. TrumpetSizzle.com. I happen to play trumpet, teach trumpet, and I also have to play other brass instruments and teach other brass instruments. The specialty here at Trumpet Sizzle um, either TrumpetSizzle.com or Trumpet Sizzle here on YouTube or Facebook. And I forgot to mention, you might be watching this on LinkedIn. I think we were able to get uh, this transferred over to LinkedIn. So if you're watching on LinkedIn, shout out to you guys. If you're watching this on my, um, getting it from my news feed on Facebook, shout out to people on Facebook. Um, I think the bulk of people, the people are coming here from YouTube. But basically it's uh, Trumpet Sizzle. The forte and the specialty here is amateur. This, as I mentioned in another video, the meat, the muscle. This is important, important, très important. So it's very important. Uh, that's what the niche is here and the focus and the expertise is amateur strength and endurance. And my opinion is if you don't have that, uh, you you have to make it up in another way, and, and it's not going to be too good. It's not going to be too good. You got to have that for all your other skills to really flourish and to uh, play your best. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I enjoyed everybody here tonight. It was a very lively and interesting discussion. I tried to sneak in a little bit of home defense, and I feel that's important. I don't have the links this time, but I'm going to make a note and try to have the links for things I talk about in case you want to help support this channel. And then you, that way you don't have to search either. Uh, you can get quickly to those links. So we're ending another, what is it? June 6th tonight. I didn't even mention the date. It's Sunday night, June 6th, 2021. Um, talked about a lot of different things. And I guess I got a lot of shout outs from different people. So that really tickles my fancy. I will see you guys soon, and it's going to be over and out. I will see you in the next one, guys.